I just want to mention something I found. Eleven live. Eleven alive. A L I V E. They have an awesome live stream where they just. John Ossoff has beaten David Perdue 56% to 43%, 220,000 votes. Uh, Warnick has beaten Loeffler 57% to 43%. Blackman is beating McDonald 57% to 43%, 204,000 to, see, 220,000 versus 171,000 with Asa v. Purdue, 219,000 versus 164,000 with Warnick v. Lawfler, 204,000 versus 157,000 in Blackman versus who the fuck ever. Been running for a while, maybe 5, 10, 20 minutes, and uh, the numbers have essentially for Warnick and Lawfler. Lawfler is gaining on Warnick, but the numbers for Ossoff and Purdue seem to be pretty close, neck and neck. Well, no, actually, it's getting, yeah, it's getting pretty close for both of them. In at 52% to 48% with Warnick and Lawfler, 51% to 49%. Blackman and McDonald, holy fuck. Uh, Purdue also 52% to 48%. Man, oh man. 52% to 48%. So, that's Warnick v. Lawfler. That means it's a very close race in Georgia. I hope there isn't a civil war. I hope that this settles, you know, um, whatever. So, there's also election night reporting. So, that's on YouTube. And then, just the Secretary of State, they have that Purdue is losing to Ossoff one, let's see, 200,000 to... 232,000. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to get back to Brendan Keith. He's tracking and analyzing the latest results uh, as they come in around the state tonight. So, Brendan, the last time that we spoke with you, it was goose eggs for all four of them, right? So are you seeing right. any new numbers now? Yeah, remember when I said you'd never see this ma uh, map blank again? Well, here you go. The oh. colors are starting to fill in. Uh, and right now we've got about 400,000 votes in, which sounds like a lot, but we're expecting about 4 million votes or more. Uh, to come in uh, when this is all over. So this doesn't really tell us that much because even though we know where the votes are coming from, we just don't know how much of the vote from each of these counties uh, represents. So you've got this lead here, which, oh, then this is an important point. Let's check this out. So here's Ossoff and Purdue, right? Watch these numbers. And there's Warnock and Leffler, and you're not seeing a huge difference. You're not seeing a lot of ticket splitting uh, between, you know, people aren't going, you know, Purdue and then Warnock or Ossoff and then Leffler at this point. Uh, but here's why I'm pointing out how early this is. Chatham County here uh, is showing bright red uh, with a 72-27 split here in this particular race. But if we go and look at the Chatham County uh, in the general election, you can see it was totally different. So uh, this is just way too early. I don't want you to take anything from these numbers and say, okay, this is what the race is going to look like. In fact, we're reporting 0% because it's just not significant yet in terms of trying to determine, uh, read the tea leaves, there's still a lot of the Fulton County vote out still, for example. So we just have to see where this is all going to come from. All right, Brendan, thank you. The momentum has been building here in Georgia ahead of today's runoff, and our Verify team is on hand to answer your questions, and that includes following the money. Why do Lucas Verify? Scott came to the Verify team with a question, asking just how much money has been spent on Georgia's Senate races. Let's verify with our source, the Center for Responsive Politics, which tracks campaign spending. According to the nonprofit, the Georgia contests are the top two most expensive congressional elections ever. The research group says the Purdue Ossoff race takes the top seat for spending with nearly $470 million as of January 4th. The Leffler Warnock race follows with nearly $363 million spent. Both of the numbers include spending by candidates and outside groups over the course of the primary and general elections. And Brendan Quinn says those aren't even the final numbers. Consistently, election after election break records, uh, but still the spending on these two races is absolutely insane, and we still don't have all of the numbers. In terms of spending, these are the only two that have ever crossed that $300 million threshold. Based on the nonprofit's data, we can answer Scott's question. More than $830 million have been spent for Georgia's twin races and ultimately control of the Senate. The balance of the Senate, who controls the Senate, has come down to two election runoffs in the same state. So certainly
certainly a very unique happening, but at the same time, we've seen elections becoming more and more and more expensive. Have a question or claim for us to verify? Send us an email at verify at elevenalive.com. Let's head back over to Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb with another look at our forecast. Well, you know, um, we're watching, Natisha, the pattern here that is very chilly. We have cool air out there right now. It was a little bit warmer than average as we went through the afternoon hours today. So a little milder right here now, but we have more cold air that's going to start moving our way as we move through the next few days. And then once that gets here, it's going to stick around for a while. So at the same time as this cold air is in place, we're also going to be watching some areas of rain that will move in. And even though we think it's going to be a cold rain here in Metro Atlanta Thursday into Friday, there's another system coming in on Monday into Tuesday that will have some cold rain with it. And we'll be watching as well the potential for a winter mix over parts of northeast Georgia again. The air is going to ever shut his damn yap. Moves in, but we think here in Metro Atlanta, John Ossoff being Purdue, 53% to 47%. This is from the Secretary of State's website, 286 to 254. So John Ossoff has been up and continues to stay up above David Purdue. The gap is severe, is 47 to 53%, so just six point gap. But I mean, when it started, but 2% reporting, 2.52% uh, reporting Kelly Loeffler, Raphael Warnick, 53% to Warnick, 47% to Loeffler, 288,000 to 252,000. Well, that's, you know, uh, just over half a million votes. We're expecting 4 million votes, so there's still, you know, the lion's share of everybody that still needs to vote. And also, Daniel Back. Blackman is beating Lauren Bubba McDonald Jr. And so Daniel Blackman, all the Democrats are beaten, you know, just by a point or two or what have you, 52 to 48 percent, 53 to 47 percent, 53 to 47 percent. So six point spread, six point spread, and a four point spread. So these Georgia elections, this might take all night and tomorrow and then, you know, the end of the week and maybe a week after that. Who knows? Because this shit's razor thin. Donald Trump lost Georgia by 11,000 votes, and he desperately tried to find them 11,000 votes. He knew exactly the number, what was one above the number he got, which was the losing number. Maybe some breaks in those clouds to give us some sunshine here and there around lunchtime, but then late afternoon into the evening. All right, so it looks like, actually, maybe I should refresh this. It looks like this TV show has more accurate numbers than the Secretary of website. So you got the Georgia election, he's going on and on, so it looks like, oh, God, it's going to rain all over the place, <laughs> all over the east side, it looks like a fucking weird-ass tornado, like a big slow-moving tornado. That weekend is going to be a chilly one with lows around freezing, both Saturday and Sunday morning, and afternoon highs that will be uh, generally there in the lower 50s and even upper 40s. Then another well, 40s and 50s, not too bad, not too bad, 40s and 50s, okay, a lot better than the San Luis Valley. Single digits. We're in single digit territory now. So the numbers that, uh, let's see, they got the damn captioning in front of it. But uh, let's see. Looks like it's 275,000, so it's, you know, more. 36 of 2,600 precincts. <laughs> There's no reason to be reporting it this fucking accurately. I think. It's 6.49 Pacific Standard Time. Day three of the four-day shit week, January 5th, 2021, Tuesday. Says on the 11 Alive app, it's streaming so you can watch the election coverage live. 11 Live, that's cool shit. That's cool shit. So they don't have the numbers on the TV no more, but I'm sure it's, you know, you know. So, what's up, Richard? Jimmy Dore.